Welcome to Wisdom Trek with Gramps. I am Guthrie Chamberlain and we are on day 2403 of our trek. The purpose of Wisdom Trek is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, and to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. In today's Wisdom Nugget, I'll guide you through the vast landscapes of biblical wisdom. Today we'll delve into the second part of Psalms 2, verses 7 through 12 from the New Living Translation. This passage shifts our focus from the rebellious nation to the declaration of God's decree and the ultimate victory of His Anointed One. It is a powerful and profound conclusion to this royal psalm, and it offers us insights into God's sovereignty and our response to His authority. So let's embark on the trek together as we uncover the rich wisdom found in these verses. Psalm chapter 2, verses 7 through 12. The king proclaims the Lord's decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Only ask and I will give you the nations as your inheritance and the whole earth as your possession. You will break them like an iron rod and smash them like clay pots. Now then, you kings, act wisely. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with reverent fear and rejoice with trembling. Submit to God's royal son, or he will become angry and you will be destroyed in the midst of all your activities, for his anger flares up in an instant. But what joy for all who take refuge in him. Psalm chapter 2 verses 7 through 12 begins with the powerful declaration. The king proclaims the Lord's decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son, today I have become your father. Verse 7. This profound moment where the king likely in reverence to King David initially, but ultimately pointing to Jesus Christ, revealed God's divine proclamation. The language of sonship signifies a special relationship with the unique authority bestowed upon the king. This declaration echoes the covenantal promise that is made to David in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 14, where God declares, I will be his father and he will be my son. The next verse, verse 8, continues with God's promise. Only ask and I will give you the nations as your inheritance, the whole earth as your possession. This is an outstanding promise of authority and dominion extending far beyond the borders of Israel. The king is invited to ask, and God will grant him the nations and the ends of the earth as his inheritance. This promise emphasizes the global reign of the anointed king that foreshadows the universal kingdom of Christ. In verse 9 we read, You will break them with an iron rod and smash them like clay pots. This imagery of an iron rod and shattered clay pots conveys the absolute power and authority of the king to judge and rule over the nations. It is a vivid picture of the ultimate triumph of God's anointed one over all opposition. The iron rod symbolizes unyielding strength, while the broken clay pots illustrate the fragility of those who oppose God's rule. With the declaration of God's decree and the promise of the king's ultimate authority, the psalmist now turns to the rulers of the earth with a stern warning and a call to wisdom. Verses 10 through 12 contain this urgent appeal. Now then, you kings, act wisely. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with reverent fear and rejoice with trembling. Submit to God's royal son, or he will become angry and you will be destroyed in the midst of all your activities. For his anger flares up in an instant, but what joy for all who take refuge in him. Verse 10 urges the kings and rulers to act wisely and heed the warning. The rebellious nations and their leaders are called to recognize the defiance futility and align themselves with God's sovereign rule. In this context, wisdom involves acknowledging God's authority and a humble submission to His will. In verse 11, the psalmist instructs the rulers to serve the Lord with reverent fear and rejoice with trembling. This dual call to serve and rejoice highlights the appropriate response to God's majesty and authority. Reverent fear acknowledges God's holiness and power, while rejoicing with trembling signifies a joyful submission to His righteous rule. It is a call to worship and obedience, recognizing that true joy is found in serving the Lord. Verse 12 intensifies the appeal with a specific command. Submit to God's royal son, or he will become angry and you will be destroyed in the midst of all your activities, for his anger flares up in an instant. The call to submit to God's royal son underscores the necessity of recognizing and honoring the authority of anointed king. Failure to do so results in destruction, as the king's righteous anger will swiftly bring judgment. However, the verse concludes with a promise. But what joy for all who take refuge in Him. This assurance highlights the blessing and security found in submitting and taking refuge in the Anointed One. Psalm 2, verses 7-12 through 12, powerfully affirms the sovereignty of God and His authority as the Anointed King. 
The declaration, You are my son, today I have become your father, underscores the unique relationship between God and the king ultimately fulfilled in Jesus Christ. The promise of the nations as the inheritance and the authority to break them with an iron rod highlighting the comprehensive and unsalable reign of the anointed one. This passage calls to recognize the futility of resisting God's rule and the wisdom of submitting to his authority. It challenges us to serve the Lord with reverent fear and to rejoice with trembling, acknowledging his majesty and power. The command to submit to God's royal Son emphasizes the necessity of honoring Jesus as King and finding refuge in Him. The concluding promise, but what joy for all those who take refuge in Him, offers a profound assurance of blessing and security for those who align themselves with God's sovereign rule. It reminds us of true joy and peace that is found in the submission to Christ and embracing His reign over our lives. Ultimately, the truths of Psalm chapter 2, verses 7 through 12 has practical implications for our lives. First, it is called to acknowledge and honor the authority of Jesus Christ instead of resisting his rule. We are invited to submit to his lordship and embrace his ways. This involves recognizing Jesus as our king and following his teachings. Second, it encourages us to trust God's sovereignty. We can feel comfort in knowing that God is in control of the world, often marked with chaos and conflict. His plans and purposes will prevail, regardless of human opposition. This trust allows us to navigate life's uncertainties with confidence and hope. Third, the challenges allow, third, it challenges us to live wisely and serve the Lord with reverent fear. This involves a commitment to obedience and worship, recognizing God's holiness and majesty. It also includes joyful submission to the righteous rule, finding our delight and security in His authority. As we reflect on the profound wisdom of Psalm chapter 2, verses 7 through 12, several key takeaways emerge. First, acknowledge the authority of Christ. Recognize Jesus as your King and submit to His Lordship. Embrace His teaching and align your lives to His ways. Second, trust in God's sovereignty. Take comfort in knowing that God is in control and His plans will prevail. Trust in His authority and find peace in His sovereign rule. Third, live wisely and serve the Lord. Act wisely by serving the Lord with reverent fear. Worship Him with joyful and trembling heart, acknowledging His holiness and majesty. And fourth, find refuge in Christ. Embrace the promise of joy and security for those who take refuge in Jesus, recognizing that true peace and blessing are found in submission to His authority. How can we apply these lessons to our daily lives? Start by examining in your heart and motives. Are there areas where you're resisting God's authority and trying to assert your own will? Surrender those areas to Him and seek His guidance and direction. Trust in God's sovereignty, especially when you face challenges and uncertainties. Remind yourself that He is in control and that His plans will prevail. This trust will bring you peace and confidence as you navigate life's complexities. Live wisely by serving the Lord with reverent fear and rejoice with trembling. Commit to obedience and worship recognizing God's holiness and majesty. Find joy and delight in His righteous rule over your life. As we conclude our exploration of Psalm chapter 2, verses 7 through 12, let's carry these insights with us. Acknowledge the authority of Christ, trust in God's sovereignty, live wisely, serve the Lord, and find refuge in Jesus. By doing so, we align ourselves with Psalm's timeless wisdom and navigate life's complexities with grace and purpose. So join me next time as we continue exploring the rich treasures and wisdom found in the Bible. Until then, keep seeking God's wisdom, cherish each moment, and continue making a positive impact on the world around you. And if you found this podcast insightful, please subscribe and leave us a review. Then encourage your friends and family to join us and come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, and most importantly, I am your friend, as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and create a great day every day. 
See you next time for more Daily Wisdom.